morning, everyone. So I want to thank everyone for coming. And I also want to thank you for all of your feedback. Thank you for all the positive feedback, and but also thank you for any negative feedback. It helps us to continue to re-evolve and do things a little bit differently and see what's working and what's not working. You know, I was, I'm always reminded, St. Thomas the Apostle is one of my favorites. He's my confirmation name, I took him. Um, Thomas was known as a doubter, and he wasn't present when Jesus first appeared in the upper room to the 12 or the 11. And he said, well, I need to see, I need proof. And Jesus comes and he meets him where he is in his unbelief to give him belief. All of us here who are gathered are different stages of life and belief. Some of us are here, but still very fearful and afraid of what's going on or where this virus is. And some of us are here and not afraid um, of the virus or catching it. And yet all of us need to meet each other, just like Jesus did with Thomas, where we are in our belief and our unbelief and to minister to each other, but also to give each other hope and security and peace of mind. So I thank you for your patience as we continue to go through this and evolve and re-evolve. You know, it's not perfect, but I think we're doing a pretty good job um, of what we're doing. And I wanna thank our ambassadors and our reopening committee um, for all of their hard work. We've been working uh, behind the scenes. This Wednesday, we're gonna start up our evening weekday mass, so Wednesday, 5.30, uh, beginning this Wednesday. So if you can't make it in the morning, or if you know someone who doesn't wanna come on the weekend, um, we have the 5.30 during the week. Um, so it's little things like that that we're doing. So I ask you, um, if you're here, to please continue to wear your mask. If you're in your seat, please stay seated um, for communion, we'll be coming to you. Uh, if you don't have a mask and you need a mask, ask one of our ambassadors, they have one. Um, communion, please have your hand flat uh, so that we can come to you. Um, and again, as always, thank you for your patience. And pray that we don't get any raindrops. As for me, In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And my brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal. You were sent to heal with contrite of heart. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, 
we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and the glory of God the Father. Amen. And let us pray. O God, who show the light of your truth to those who go astray, so that they may return to the right path, give all who for the faith they profess are accounted Christians the grace to reject whatever is contrary to the name of Christ and to strive after all that does it honor. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, just as from the heavens the rain and snow come down and do not return there, till they have watered the earth, making it fruitful and fertile, giving seed to the one who sows and bread to the one who eats. So shall, be, so shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. My word shall not return to me void, but shall do my will, achieving the end for which I sent it. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The responsorial psalm, the seed that falls on good ground will yield a fruitful harvest. The seed that falls on good ground will yield a fruitful harvest. You have visited the land and watered it. Greatly have you enriched it. God's water courses are filled. You have prepared the grain. The seed that falls on good ground will yield a fruitful harvest. Thus have you prepared the land, drenching its furrows, breaking up its clods, softening it with showers, blessing its yield. The seed that falls on good ground will yield a fruitful harvest. You have crowned the year with your bounty, and your paths overflow with a rich harvest. The untilled meadows overflow with it, and rejoicing clothes the hills. The seed that falls on good ground will yield a fruitful harvest. The fields are garmented with flocks and the valleys blanketed with grain. They shout and sing for joy. The seed that falls on good ground will yield a fruitful harvest. The second reading is a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, I consider that the sufferings of this present time are nothing compared with the glory to be revealed for us. For creation awaits with eager expectation the revelation of the children of God. For creation was made subject to futility, not of its own accord, but because of the one who subjected it, in hope that creation itself would be set free from slavery to corruption and share in the glorious freedom of the children of God. We know that all creation is groaning in labor pains, even until now. And not only that, but we ourselves who have the first fruits of the Spirit, we also groan within ourselves as we wait for adoption, the redemption of our bodies. This is the word of the Lord.
Sisters and brothers, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. On that day, Jesus went out of the house and sat down by the sea. Such large crowds gathered around him. Then he got into a boat and sat down, and the whole crowd stood along the shore. And he spoke to them at length in parables, saying, A sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seed fell on the path, and birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky ground, where it had little soil. It sprang up at once because the soil was not deep. And when the sun rose, it was scorched, and it withered for lack of roots. Some fell among the thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked it. But some seed fell on rich soil and produced fruit, a hundred or sixty or thirty-fold. Whoever has ears ought to hear. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. St. Paul says to us today in Romans, For creation awaits with eager expectation the revelation of the children of God eager expectation. The word that St. Paul uses in the Greek is apokaradakia. It literally means to watch with one's head erect and outstretched, with intense expectation and earnest watching. For St. Paul, life was not weary or defeated or despairing, but pulsating with vivid expectation. It was alive, watching, waiting with hope for the coming of our Lord Jesus. You know, there's an old saying about the Christian. A Christian is called to be in the world, but not of the world. And no matter what we do to try to avoid it, we are involved in this great big human experience, aren't we? this great big human situation. And from within ourselves, in us as persons, we have to battle with what it means to be a human being and everything that goes with it, sin, insecurities, all of it. And from without, outside in the world, we must live in the world, a world that has death and decay of COVID and riots of joblessness and fear. And even with all of this, the Christian does not live solely in the world, but also lives in Christ Jesus. We are a new creation who has clothed herself and himself in Christ. My sisters and brothers, the good news of this Sunday that we hear today is that we must not just see the world around us for all of its ups and downs that are occurring, but we must also look beyond it, beyond to Almighty God, and see hope, see hope in his creation. We must not only see the consequences of humanity's sins, our sins, but we must also see the power of God's love of his mercy, of his forgiveness. To keep one's head erect and outstretched with intense expectation and earnest watching, always keeping God in the forefront, always being positive, looking for that bright new day with hope. For creation awaits with eager expectation the revelation of the children of God. We are called to be in the world, but not of the world. We eagerly await not death, but life. And as Christians, we are called to always live a life full of hope 
and never despair because our God is constantly liberating, constantly renewing, constantly recreating with his power and his glory to bring about his kingdom in this world. May the Eucharist that we celebrate today help us to live as people of hope with eager expectation. Let us stand and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men, for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Dear brothers and sisters, Jesus says, man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. With love for the word of God, we earnestly pray. For the church, that during this challenging time, the church can be a rich soil, so that the people of God will produce fruits a hundred or sixty or thirty fold. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Pope Francis, Bishop Ed, priests, deacons, and lay ministers, that we are always aware of the importance of God's words, try to read them and put them into practice in daily life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all government officers, especially law enforcement, that they work together to seek for truths and that they may bring love, hope, and peace for all of us by following the virtue of justice. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the suffering from the flu or coronavirus or other life threatening issues, that they know how to run to Jesus in faith and hope so that God will give them the healing grace and blessings. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our Mother Christi family, that we always try to live according to the word of God and help us help each other to build a community of living for one another. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are in our parish who are ill, for all our benefactors, and for the prayers written in the Book of Intentions. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Richard Carey Landis, in whose memory the sanctuary light burns this week. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of our loved ones who have died, especially for yours, Breston, 
Frank Cronin, Mary Rose Majelli Carlo, Anthony Panetta, Richard Carey Landis, Anthony De Tomasis, John and Josephine Romanzo, Tom J. Yukero, Xavier Bandalan, Sabia Kabahang, for whom this mass is offered. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. Lord Jesus, every time we attend the mass, please help us to prepare our hearts and listen attentively so that the proclamation of your word will truly become a precious source of nutrition for our life. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Look upon the offerings of the Church, O Lord, as she makes her prayer to you, and grant that, when consumed by those who believe, they may bring ever greater holiness, through Christ our Lord. Amen.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by his birth, he brought renewal to humanity's fallen state, and by his suffering, canceled out our sins. By his rising from the dead, he has opened the way to eternal life. And by ascending to you, O Father, he has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so, with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, and entered willingly into his passion. He took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Edward, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. And at the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days. That, by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope 
and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us safely offer one another a sign of peace. Lamb of God, who take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, who take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, who take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Again, as a reminder, we will be coming to you, um, so you stay where you are. If for any reason you're not going to receive, but wish a blessing, just cross your heart, and uh, you'll receive it. You'll receive a blessing after you receive. If you'd please be seated, so it will help the ministers identify who is not yet received. Thank you.
I'd like to recognize a few visitors who are with us this morning. Um, if you guys wouldn't mind standing up for a moment. Uh, these three young ladies, uh, Sadie, Ruth, and Jennifer, uh, are members of the Neo Catechumenal Way, and they're from three different parishes in New Jersey, and they're here with us on a mission trip this week. So they, uh, they came here without cell phones or money or anything like that, and They've just been visiting all of the parishes in Albany this week, and they volunteered at our food pantry one day, and just announcing to whoever they met on the street or in the parishes uh, the good news of the gospel and sharing with them uh, the way that, uh, you know, in the darker moments of their life, how they encountered the, the love and mercy of Christ. And uh, it's just been a beautiful witness and uh, exercise and trust, I think. They've had to rely on just the goodness of whoever they encountered for food or water or shelter. And uh, they said, uh, those of you that they've encountered around the parish this week, uh, they've been really touched by your kindness and hospitality. And they go back down to New Jersey today. So I just wanted to assure them of our prayers for them and their ministry and thank them for blessing our community with their presence this week. So thank you very much. Let us pray. Having consumed these gifts, we pray, O Lord, that by our participation in this mystery, its saving effects upon us may grow. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life and maintaining social distance and taking your time as we leave. Remain healthy this week. God bless. God bless. Thanks be to God.